Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to try to determine the spherical capacitor, or what I should say, the capacitance of a spherical capacitor. So here we have a capacitor drawn. We have a sphere on the inside and a sphere on the outside. They have the same center, and you can see that there's a amount of charge Q on the inner sphere, and there's a charge minus Q on the outer sphere. The radius of the inner sphere is R1, the radius of the outer sphere is R2, and we know that by definition the capacitance is going to be equal to the charge divided by the potential difference between the two spheres. So to find the potential difference between the two spheres, let's first define the electric field outside the inner sphere. And since the electric field is only determined by the charge on the inner sphere and not the charge on the outer sphere because you're inside the outer sphere, we could then say that the electric field E, and let's call it E sub 1, which means electric field caused by the inner sphere, is equal to K times Q divided by R squared. R, of course, being any R between R1 and R2. All right, now we want to find the potential between, or the potential difference between R1 and R2. So what we're going to do there is use the relationship that the electric field is equal to V divided by, by the distance traveled, you could say V divided by R, or you could say that V is equal to E times R, but this is only true if E is constant. In this case, of course, the electric field is not constant, it's a function of 1 over R squared, so therefore we can write this relationship between the potential and the electric field, we can write it in a differential form, so we can write that dV is equal to E times dR. And dV is, of course, the same as the change in potential between the inner and the outer ring, or I should say inner and outer sphere, because they're not rings, they're spheres. And so we can say that uh, V, the total potential, is equal to the integral of all the dVs, which is equal to negative the integral of E dot, or E times dr. Why the negative? Because as the radius increases, the potential decreases. So as R gets bigger, the potential gets smaller and that's why we need a negative to compensate for that. And of course we're going to integrate this from R1 to R2, uh, going from R1 to R2. <clears throat> or better yet, I think what we should do by definition, we st should start on the outer radius and work ourselves into the radius because that way the potential will be positive. So let's start from R2 and go to R1. That's a better integral because realizing that the potential will be positive when we have positive charge there, when we move from a farther place and get closer, potential goes up, it increases, so that's what we want. So in this case, we want the change in potential, the difference in potential going from R2 to R1, which defined as V, which is equal to integral from R2 to R1 of dV, which is equal to minus the integral from R2 to R1, and instead of E, we're going to write what E is equal to, which is this right here, which is KQ over R squared. We still need our dr, so let's put the dr over there, and one thing I'm thinking about is instead of writing K, a lot of books like to write 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, so we can do that. So this is equal to the integral from R2 to R1 of 1 over, or I can just write Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. So we write 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught instead of K. R squared dr. And now we're ready to start integrating that. I think actually what I... Oh, I'm missing my minus. I can't leave my minus out there. There we go. Now, before I do that, I like to write my R squared as the R to the minus 2. It makes it easier to integrate. Take my constants outside. So the change in potential going from R2 to R1, which is equal to the potential I'm looking for, which is finally going to go in there, is equal to a minus Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the integral from R2 to R1 of R to the negative 2 dr. And now we're ready to integrate that. That, of course, we add one to exponent, divide by the new exponent, so minus Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times r to the minus 1 over minus 1, evaluated from r2 to r1. And before we put the limits in, I'd like to rewrite it a little bit. These two negative signs will cancel each other out. So this is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the quantity 1 over r. Oop, let me write that as a better r. Oh, like that. 
going from R2 to R1. All right, now I can plug in my limits, see what we get. Uh, delta V, which is equal to V, which is equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the quantity. Uh, let's see here, that would be upper limit 1 over R1 minus the lower limit 1 over R2. And that would be the potential between the two spheres. Now, to check quickly, R2 is a bigger number. R1 is a small number. 1 divided by a bigger number must be smaller than 1 divided by a small number, so that will be a bigger number minus a small number, therefore that will be positive, so the delta V, the potential there, will be a positive quantity when we go from R2 to R1. I think now we're ready to plug that in. You may want to write that in a slightly different form. Sometimes it helps to write it as Q divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught, and simply add these together or subtract them common denominator is R1 times R2, so this becomes uh, R2 minus R1 over R1 times R2. So that would be another way of writing that. So that would be R2 divided by R2, R1 divided by R1, so that would be uh, R2 minus R1 divided by the common denominator, R1 times R2. So that's another way of writing that. So finally, we can say, therefore, the capacitance of a spherical capacitor is equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by the difference in the voltage, which would be Q divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the quantity R2 minus R1 over R1 times R2, like so. And then, of course, the Qs cancel out. The 4 pi epsilon sub naught goes to the numerator. You flip that over, and you have the capacitance equal to 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the quantity R1, R2, divided by R2 minus R1. And that would be the capacitance of a spherical capacitor. And notice that the only things that matter in this case is the dimensions of the plates, the radii of the inner sphere and the radii of the outer sphere. Nothing else matters, we still have the constant 4 pi epsilon sub naught. And that's how we do that.